Welcome to Civilization V Deity Series. Here's our achievement, proving we won at Deity. So get your popcorn and your notepad and enjoy seeing everything you need to know to do the same. I'm George Venus from TGN Games and this is Deity Level Strategies at the Hardest Level of Play. Here we go. First, pick Wu Zetian of the Chinese Nation to get three very important bonuses. One, the Chinese Crossbowman fires twice per turn, the Chu Konu. Two, the Chinese Library, called the Paper Maker, makes an extra four gold per turn. And three, most importantly, the Great Generals of the Chinese give you an extra 20% combat strength, 45% total, to all units within two squares. And since in Deity, combat is very important, that alone is worth picking the Chinese. The French plus two culture bonus in each city is nice, but build one monument in every city and you got it. The Roman 25% building production bonus is nicer until you realize you keep getting your ass handed to you by military defeats at deity level. Combat and gold bonuses are the most important and the Chinese have the best. In this game, notice we have Berlin and Hamburg. We completely defeated the Germans on turn 74. The secret is to build horsemen as quickly as possible and blitzkrieg, ironically the Germans, while they are still running around with their pants down, i.e. with their archers and their warriors. So start researching animal husbandry uh, to see where the horses are, then the wheel, and then that leads to horseback riding which lets you start building the horsemen. This is the most powerful unit at the beginning of the game and with it only three horsemen you can defeat the first civilization right next to you and squeeze in one luxury resource to avoid unhappiness it's very easy to get unhappy so in your first city in our case it was Beijing build a scout you want to find ancient ruins before other civilizations and the scout helps you explore the land very quickly then when your city reaches size 2 make a settler only make the bare minimum number of workers you need and capture the rest at wartime. So our second city was Shanghai, which we positioned next to horses so that we could make the horsemen. We were quite lucky and Beijing had horses right next to it, but only two of them, plus those four gave us six horses. After Shanghai, we went on the offensive and captured Berlin and then Hamburg and that brought us to turn 74. So create those two cities and capture the rest. But when you do capture cities, raise every city you conquer and create a new one if you like the area to avoid having to build a courthouse and pay five gold every turn to maintain it. You cannot raise cities that were civilization capitals. So for example, Berlin, we cannot raise this city because it once was a capital. Hamburg, we can raise, and we're going to start burning, yes, and when it's down to the ground, we'll take one of our settlers and we'll put it right in its place or nearby if we prefer a different place. You should also know you cannot raise city-states, but if an opponent takes a city-state and you take it back, choose to liberate it instead of annex it. This will cause the city-state to become your ally for a very long time. They really like being liberated. So culture city-states give plus 12 culture per turn. And maritime city-states give plus 4 go uh, food sorry, to your main city and plus 2 to every other city. So you can see this one, Genoa, we are currently allies with them. And they're giving us 4 food in our capital city and 2 in all our other cities, making us grow a lot faster than we would normally. If you look at our capital city, it has six food. That's because it's getting two from the main city plus four from Genoa. This Shanghai is getting two by default and then plus two from Genoa. 
and that's the same with all of our other cities plus two there and plus two here so city-state allies are extremely important and if you can make the allies by liberating a city then they're going to be allies for you for a long time and focus on taking cities near luxury resources try to get one of every luxury resource on your starting island so that you can get the most happiness and then help you expand the fastest now for social policies you should focus on honor as the first one honor will give you access to a great general right away and then lets you double your experience points from combat very important to get your troops to higher levels faster then you get the 15 percent combat strength next to adjacent units and you also get one unhappiness one less unhappiness every time you put a military unit in a city and finally very importantly the cost of upgrading your military units is reduced by 50 percent this is the trick you create the cheapest units possible like a warrior and then upgrade them to a legion or a swordsman or long swordsman upgrade all of your horsemen to where are they here to knights so that way you don't have to build knights which take 150 uh, production to build you could just build a horseman which is almost half off and then upgrade them for 75 gold now 75 gold is very cheap as you continue expanding your empire you're going to be making about 75 gold per turn so once you can afford it uh, you can have a huge army produced very quickly two combat tips as you level up your military units first pick three of the same terrain bonus so if you look at this horseman we're gonna pick and it doesn't matter which one as long as you're consistent let's pick the open terrain not the rough terrain because there's more open terrain here so he just went up a level and he has one open terrain when he gets the next level uh, he needs another 15 experience points then I'll pick the second open terrain and then the third open terrain and after the third open terrain you can then pick the second level advancement which is blitz or uh, march now blitz will let you attack multiple times per turn and march will let you heal no matter whether you do an action or not every turn march is extremely useful to keep your units alive and so you don't have to spend a whole turn doing nothing for you to heal now you'll notice our next goal would be to take over the Russians we want to capture Moscow Novgorod Rostov but be careful when taking cities you want to create as few cities as possible every city adds plus two unhappiness and an extra 30% culture to get to the next social policy now when finding new cities try to put them next to rivers and lakes because the farms next to rivers and lakes fresh water get an extra plus one food when you re when you research civil service now when you try to build wonders like the Chichen Itza try to build them near cities in cities that have marble next to them because marble gives you an extra 25 percent bonus to building wonders but it only applies to the city where that marble is part of so if I wanted to change the production to a wonder which we can't produce right now but if we could we would get an extra 25 percent so instead of 10 production it would be 12.5 production so 25 percent more than what you're currently making a very important bonus uh, when you're making a wonder which normally takes a very long time skipping ahead 31 turns to turn 105 we've taken over all of Russia's cities we've left them one Yaroslavl and that's a good strategy let the uh, civilization surrender and gift you gold and gold per turn and you can take them over any time later and another strategy is the double cross you can set up a research agreement and then uh, gift one of your cities to the other side um, take their gold then declare war on them take your city back and by de declaring war you get the research agreement completed right away it doesn't have to take 30 turns and it's not very nice but they would do it to you so don't feel too bad and here we go 
we've now finally been able to afford our 50% upgrade social policy. We've upgraded all of our units and we've sent them across the water to invade Greece. And this is D-Day. You can see all of these are war units embarked. There are no troop transports in Civilization V. You just send your units into the water and they just start swimming. Well, they have their own little boats. And you can see all of our units are ready to land but we couldn't land. The problem was there were so many Greek units all throughout his island that we couldn't find a single place to put down our army. So D-Day was a real problem and we ended up bribing Geneva. We went to Geneva and said I'll give you some gold and I had to pay them a thousand gold to get them, uh, sorry, 500 gold and then 250 gold to get them to be allies more than one turn. If you just give them 500 gold, you get 60 culture, which makes them allies 60 of 60 for one turn, and then, then they become not allies. So we had to pay 750 gold so that we could have a beach to land on so we could invade Greece. Five turns after D-Day, now on turn 181, we started at turn 176, we've invaded Greece very successfully. All of our units are marching in a wave against the Greeks and we've discovered Athens. Athens is their capital city. If we take their capital, we win the game. Now it would be nice to take over everybody, but we're going to focus on the capital and merge all of our knights and long swordsmen onto Athens. Here we go. And now we've converged all of our forces on Athens. We're about to take over the city and we can end this turn and then next turn uh, we should win the game. Now the Greeks have a lot of units. You can see all this activity going on. There are cannon fire, artillery fire. Uh, they kill a lot of our units um, from the other cities and here is one little poor knight getting gang banged by all these <laughs> warriors and all this other stuff going on. Uh, that's the city of Copenhagen. It's a city-state that the Greeks are attacking and oh look Oslo doesn't want to be friends anymore. I don't know why they chose to not be friends but that's not important. What's important is we're about to take Athens and here we go. One night. Didn't do it. Second night. Did it. You have triumphed through conquest, defeating all of your enemies upon the field of battle. You have scattered their armies and captured their cities. Long will the people remember your glorious victory. Well, long live, long live the victory, and you can see we've had the victory on Deity, level 8. This is the same game that I've just reloaded a couple times while creating this video. Uh, but we've defeated Deity uh, as Wu Zetian of the Chinese, and we can have a look just one more turn, annex the city. What does Athens look like? The capital city of the Greeks and their almighty empire. Okay, they have a Colosseum and the Hanging Gardens. Not that exciting. That's what happens when you take over a city. Most of the construction gets destroyed, except the hang except the wonders. All the wonders stay there. And the Hanging Gardens, ah, there they are. Right there, those are the Hanging Gardens. It's really cool is every, every building has its own icon. Every wonder has its own image. The Great Wall actually looks really cool. It's this big wall that surrounds your civilization when you build it. But this is exciting. We've defeated the Greeks. We've won the game. And this was on the small map, the uh, default size when you start playing the game. However, the standard size map uh, is our next challenge. And that's much more difficult because there's more civilizations, more landmass, and it's much more difficult to beat up everybody like we've done here. Alright, so this is George Venus from TGN Games. We'll see you next time.